thank you, uh, Chair, and thank you for holding this hearing today. And uh, I, I agree with uh, my colleague, uh, Ms. Bonamici, global China, climate change is one of the greatest challenges uh, of our time. And last September, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released a report which states with 95 percent certainty that human activities are indeed responsible for climate change. And this report was based on a rigorous review of thousands of scientific papers published by over 800 of the world's top scientists. And this report makes it clear that if we don't take steps now, if we don't take steps today to halt uh, what is causing climate change, the repercussions for humans and the environment will be catastrophic. And the problem, as I see it, uh, is that right now too few recognize uh, that this is happening. I was giving a college lecture just two nights ago, and a student asked me, well, isn't it that Republicans think climate change isn't happening and, and Democrats think climate change uh, is happening and it's caused by uh, mankind? And I, I told the student, I look at this as I would look at my cases when I was a prosecutor. And as a prosecutor, if I was proving a homicide and I had DNA evidence, I wouldn't sit in the witness chair and testify. I would call an expert DNA analyst to the witness chair, and that expert, based on that expert's uh, training and experience and education would tell the jury that uh, indeed the DNA evidence uh, was present and relevant. He's qualified as an expert. And here, as I look at it with climate change, it's no different. We have called in the experts, and the experts are Republican scientists and the experts are Democratic scientists, and they have reached a bipartisan, nonpartisan actually conclusion, which is that humans are affecting climate change. And I think the sooner we all agree on that, the sooner we all sing off of the same sheet of music, the better off we will be and the better suited we will be uh, to address uh, what we can actually do uh, to reduce its impact. And so I have repeatedly said uh, on this committee that I am for an all of the above approach to uh, energy production as we transition to clean energy technologies. But I have also made it clear that this all of the above approach, we must make sure that we are taking steps to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and lessening their impact on human health, the environment, and global climate. And so I want to enforce all, uh, reinforce also that uh, the proposed standards uh, going forward uh, are only for new plants that may be built and are not intended and will have no effect on existing plants. So we are not going to see a wave of shuttered plants and massive layoffs as a result of their implementation. So again, I want to repeat this for uh, folks in the, the coal industry who uh, rightfully may be fearful of what this means. These regulations from the EPA are for future plants, not for existing plants. And there are in-depth discussions underway right now about establishing regulations for existing plants, which the EPA currently plans to produce in June. But there is an ongoing extensing, extensive engagement uh, with all the stakeholders. Uh, to make sure that those standards will be flexible and won't have negative effects on state economies and job creation. So uh, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle uh, often talk, and I think for good reason, about not wanting to saddle our children with our national debt. And for that same reason, that same principle, I think we want to make sure that we do not saddle our children with the effects of climate change. So I am interested in uh, what this hearing produces and what our uh, witnesses have to say uh, about carbon sequestration and, and what we can do to address climate change. And with that, I yield back. Yeah, thank you, Eric.